Now, can you talk about some of the ethical questions around mining natural diamonds and and probably like a a general background, but also do you have personal opinions on that? Me? I have a lot of them. I guess both of you. (laughs) I mean, you can No, I totally want to hear Kenan. Well, I'll start with lab diamonds, and then I'll I'll go to you first for conflict uh, diamonds, Jason. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll let you get the the blunt of the spear. <laughs> um, I I read a study recently um, that looked believable that said that the cost of uh, everything's always measured in hectares of land, right? How how much energy does something take as measured in hectares of land, right? Like a a, a bison might might take two hectares of land where a potato takes 0.001 hectares of land. And that's referring to the amount of energy as as I understand it. But um, this study uh, stated that lab grown takes one tenth of the energy of a mine stone. Mm. And the type of lab grown um, and this is just to my memory, the type of lab grown, if it's CBD or chemical vapor disposition is substantially less, uh, energy, energy costing than, um, high pressure, high temperature or HPHT. So, um, ethically, as I understand it, or, or I would say my opinion, lab grown diamonds are better for the earth, um, or rather, statistically they they are better for the earth um i don't know if you've seen a picture of um uh, a mine a diamond mine but it is a massive hole in in the earth it is um they they take quite a chunk out do we have Um, one to pull up for people sure it would have to be either you or kenan that did it If I do it, everything goes to hell in my screen. I got you. I already figured out how to get my screen back. So Nice. I bet you're going to pull the one up that's north of Canada. Isn't that the one that... The Ekatai? Yeah. So uh, these are diamond miles. Okay, yeah. So these are like... That might be a six-story building right there. Wow. They are absolutely massive. These are these are large buildings here. So these pits are no joke. These dump trucks, like I'm six foot, and I probably come up mid to the uh, to the hub here. Yeah, those are huge. Right, like my head is where the axle is. Mm-hmm. Okay, it looks like a disaster movie. Yeah. And so there what you go. Happens... There's, there's Canada. Do they yeah. fill them in afterwards or that pit is just I don't think that that's really feasible to no. fill like so, yeah. Wow. I, I think um well let's try this. The giant Sardak pit. Retired diamond mine. And I, I have no way of really knowing hmm. whether these are retired or not. So there's there's like city oh, blocks that's and there's crazy. a crazy. Yeah. It's a so how do they know the diamonds are down there and that they they find one location and then, and then I believe it's in. through LIDAR, which is um oh I just learned the acronym acronym. Um laser. Yeah. Let me just look Is that, that the up thing that quick. archaeologists use to find tombs? Where they, exactly. Where they go back and forth like a lawnmower. Light. Oh, come on. Yeah, I saw light that. detection and ranging or laser imaging detecting detection and ranging. Um, they'll basically shoot a laser at the ground from a little airplane and they'll be able to tell um, oh. topographically what's there. Mm. Um, but diamonds come from the oldest parts of the Earth's crust, um, which are called cratons. So we know where those are so they can go there first take samples from the soil uh, to judge what the material is. Um, and uh, that's how they find those those mines originally. Wow. 
Wow. I had no idea that crater that is, that's, that's terrible. And I wonder what the greater, what are the greater environmental implications to these giant craters just left? There? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It looks like an, uh, an asteroid hit. 